Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. So as we begin to look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and S&P 500, all fell for the week pretty hard. Um, ten out of the ten major sectors all failed, and we were led by industrials and materials. Uh, close to 5%. And of course, the tumble that happened this week was all about the U.S. debt ceiling. So we really didn't have any overseas news that moved the market. We really didn't have anything on the corporate side. It's really about the economic news of the week. On Friday, we had the second quarter GDP uh, come in, and it came in at 1.3%. The market was expecting one7 on Thursday, we had initial claims fall in below the 400,000, and that's key if you're going to get the unemployment uh, rate uh, down. And of course, what we saw, especially towards the end of the week, is the market began to price in the chance or the lack of a chance of a debt deal. As we go into next week, we really are through the majority of our earnings season here. Uh, we have MasterCard and Priceline are probably the two biggest companies that are not really going to move the market, but it's certainly something to watch. Uh, as far as economic news, we do have some drivers this week. We've got ADP and employment. Uh, situation. So uh, we got some jobs numbers this week on Wednesday and Friday, and we have Tuesday the debt ceiling limit deadline that is put out as by the government. Um, you know, not being political about this, what's important as a trader is to to be nimble, to be flexible. Um, there's a lot of talk about people going to into cash. Uh, my advice would be be flexible. I, I would be more of a day trader than a position trader uh, until the re, uh, there's news and then you react to the news. The charts will tell you what the market feels about the news, uh, but you definitely want to be very careful uh, Monday and Tuesday as the market waits and anticipates what is going to happen in Congress. Uh, let's put the charts and take a look. As usual, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500. And what I'll do real quick is let's uh, hide the drawings for a second, just so you can see cleanly that you know uh, here's the 200 moving average. This was our end of June, early July basing, and we kind of took off from there, and now we've made our way way back. So hopefully, this for our bulls, the 200 moving average will once again add act as a key support price level. What's also here, and we'll bring back in our our drawings, is this red line. If you can see this red line coming down, that is our downtrend line from back in uh, April. And here we peak, and then it acted as support here, and then it's acting as support again. So along with our 200 moving average, we also have this backside of this downtrend line acting as support. Um, as we look at our indicators, they're all heading down to the oversold levels, but they're not there yet. Uh, so that's going to be interesting um, as we scroll out. So we got the daily basically heading towards oversold. We come out to our weekly. We'll zoom on in. And we can see the, this is another way for you to see the box that, that we're in on a weekly. Um, and here we have the 50 moving average acting as support. So there's more room to get down to it. And so our weekly is also heading down towards oversold. And the weekly does have more room. Keep in mind we have some support, horizontal support at 1275. 
as we scroll all the way out to our monthly. So we got the daily and the weekly over uh, heading towards oversold. And we can see on our monthly that they're all starting to hook, specifically MACD being the last one. So our monthly is giving us a short signal too, and there's plenty of room to go to get, at least get down to the 20 moving average. But the good news is on our monthly is that at least um, at least we're still in a higher low situation. As a matter of fact, let's grab out our trend line. We'll come on over and try to draw it out. And you can see long term there also on our multi chart we are coming into support. So all we are getting multi time frame agreement. All of them saying. Uh, we're over. We're uh, heading towards oversold. The monthly is getting ready to trigger right now, but we're also at several key support price levels. Now uh, we're adding our Qs, our Nasdaq, uh, per uh, request, and so let's take a look at this. This is the Nasdaq on the daily. And you can really see it here. We'll zoom on in. A very nice ascending wedge. You know, we've got this long-term horizontal resistance up here at uh, 2870. We've got the 200 moving average and this uptrend line from March 2009. So uh, it's also acting as support. So this has to resolve itself. Now it has banged its head off of 280, you know, uh, 28070, 2870 uh, multiple times, and so that's really shown to be a hard resistance. Um, so here's our bounce. So the question will be what happens when we bounce? Our indicators are all basically saying heading down towards oversold. We'll zoom out to the weekly. Again, really can see this ascending wedge pattern very nicely here on the NASDAQ. Uh, also the 50 moving average, uh, the 200 in the daily, the 50 on the weekly, potentially acting as support. Uh, all of them. Uh, starting to head down. So our weekly is really just starting to give our signal now, crossing over. Uh, and finally, our monthly, really can see it nicely on a monthly. There's our long term resistance at 2870. Uh, here's our uptrend from March 2009. Um, and here, just basically getting that over bought signal to say that we should be heading lower. So we're really having multi-time free agreement on the NASDAQ also, although the NASDAQ is a little behind. So definitely weakness in both the NASDAQ and S&P 500. The key is going to be all of the catalysts this week. The debt ceiling, uh, August 2nd, job numbers on Wednesday ADP. Now remember, last uh, month's ADP had no correlation to the non-farm payroll on Friday. Uh, the the ADP was really good on Wednesday. Non-farm payroll on Friday was horrible last time. So there's not always a correlation, but that doesn't mean that it's not a catalyst. It can move the market. Let's take a look at some of our market leaders to see what they're showing us. If they're also giving us multi-time frame sell signals. Okay, as we begin to look at our market leaders, we'll start off with Apple. And of course, uh, there was a statement, uh, I believe yesterday, the day before yesterday, that uh, on cash balance, on cash balance, Apple has more money in cash than the United States. I mean, Apple has like 78 billion, and the United States has 76 billion on Apple. So, Steve Jobs for president, everyone. <laughs> so, Apple clearly um, uh, in an uptrend trend. I would say sideways to bullish. A um, couple things we watch at, even though it's not all the way down at the. Uh, even though it's not all the way down at the 200 moving average, you can see that it is at a support price level as we draw right on up. And you could also go with, uh, you know, uh, the, the gap up range in here. So there's definitely some support going on in Apple right now. So if I was to give it a rating, I would go sideways to bullish. Amazon, which had earnings. We'll zoom on in there, and you kind of say the same thing here. Certainly is in an uptrend. However, right now it's possibly uh, rethinking or rebreathing the the uh, earnings that it just released. You know, depending on how you want to draw this, 
it's kind of coming into some support also uh, after its news. You can see all the buyers coming in at 220. Buyers came in, brought it back up. Buyers came in, brought it back up. Friday buyers. So 220 seems to be where buyers are finding value. And you can see over here on our market profile that we get down up 220. But if we get below 220, we easily can drop right on down to 214, our next volume support price level. And a lot of it has to do with the gap up in Amazon. So Amazon sideways to up. Uh, let's go to Google. There was a time where it was who was going to reach a thousand first, Google or gold? Of course, the answer to that is gold. <laughs> uh, as gold is on its way to, you know, 1750. It's in the 1600s right now, low 1600s. Here we can see it's in a sideways price action. We've, we've got our, our gap up and it's holding that gap right now. Um, could draw another line, but this one we would say sideways to bullish also. So that's three. Uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, I wouldn't say sideways up. I would just say sideways. It's in this big range here. It did peak its head above the 20 and the 50 for a minute, but now it's back sandwiched in between it. And look at this. Uh, I mean, it, here, if that's not a bell curve, what is it? Uh, point of control at 135. So um, Goldman Sachs, I would just say sideways. What about Netflix? The Beast. <laughs> Beautiful uptrend. Um, seems to be holding support at 260. Uh, usually, the 50 million average is a good buying place. I mean, let's zoom out. Uh, would have took a little heat, but fine. Took a little heat, fine. Took a little heat, fine. So the 50 million average has been a a place to buy. But you can see in this last price action move, the now. Uh, uh, it's starting to level off. It's not trending up. It's leveling off. So don't feel as great about buying the 50 million average right now. Uh, but this is definitely something that you want to consider buying if the market responds positively to any of the news this week. So I'm going to go sideways on Netflix. And then finally, Priceline. Another beast we saw. Remember, Priceline has earnings this week. And we could say this one also is going to be sideways. So all of these are sideways. A couple are sideways to bullish. So what is that saying about the market? That's showing indecision. That's saying the market is breathing. It could also be people taking their money out of the market. And so the buyers aren't there to keep the trends going. Um, you know, again, we're going to have to let the catalysts of this week play themselves out and trade the reaction. Okay, we're going to start off with the dollar, and you can see this long-term downtrend line we were watching, and then for the month of July, we kind of left that downtrend, and we went into this sideways action. Now, what's interesting, as I'll zoom in a little bit more, well, first, before I do it more, we'll, we'll show you that you see these wicks here from back in May. So we can definitely draw that in. And so as I increase the size here, you can kind of see that not only did we enter this sideways action, now we've broken it and 73.5 should hold up. But the important thing is the dollar is weak here and the stock market is weak. And usually there's an end first relationship, so that's not working. What is working is the dollar is weak and the gold is taken off. So gold is certainly fine. We can see our point of control down here, 16.15. And it's just a beast. Uh, you know, this is one that, you know, you. You you gotta watch yourself because depending on what happens with some of the catalysts this week, uh, gold could take a pullback. Uh, finally, with oil, it's just back into this range, um, potentially falling out of the top range, but there's a larger range here also. And then we have the 200 moving average here. So, oil is just a sideways mess. You can see it has a, its own bell curve, regardless of where uh, the larger time frame point of control actually is. Okay, because of time, we're just going to move right on to the end. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financial Literate? You know about our free five-part video course. Uh, it help you develop your own high-probability trading setups. Our coaching is what will help you t take the next level, become uh, help you develop the trader's mindset, will help you one-on-one to 
a personalized trading plan. We got a great future trading room for you. Uh, the usually average around a thousand dollars a week trading all the major futures contracts. Twenty free trades if you sign up with our futures broker. Intraday margins the lowest three hundred dollars. And finally, turn packets that work on both Macs and PCs. You can scan and find the latest moving stocks. But as we said, it's all about the trader's mindset. And it doesn't make a difference about all these outside external factors if you don't have the psychological capital to pull the trigger. And our coaching program, our mentorship program, can help you do that at Move Up With Mike. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.